had a, a meeting the other day and I had a client who asked me two really good questions and I thought it'd be great to talk about them today. So I wanted to ask you guys and kind of get your opinion and see what you all had to say. Mm -hmm. And the first question that I had is that they said, you know, there's been a lot of talk lately in the news about index annuities, how they work, the good, bad, and the ugly. And I wanted to see if we could kind of clear some of that up. So, you know, Matt, what's, what would you say to a question like that? Well, you know, I think any investment, you know, certainly the index annuity, it, it, it depends on your situation and what it is that you're trying to accomplish. I mean, we as a firm, we will utilize index annuities a lot, but not with every client because they're not appropriate uh, for every client. And, and really, no matter how good an investment sounds or an account sounds, you never want to put all of your eggs in, into one basket. So they can be appropriate in the right situation, but you know, we, we, we get questions like that mm -hmm. all, all the time. Like you mentioned, a client asked you that. And it's really because there's a lot of myths and misconceptions that are out there. Uh, you'll have some individuals that will be advertising, you should never invest in an annuity. And then you have the other end of the spectrum that individuals think all your money should go into an annuity. Mm -hmm. And I would say we as a firm, we pretty much or somewhere in the middle, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, they're sometimes good, they're sometimes not good. It, it depends on your situation. And then obviously no two annuities are exactly identical. Mm -hmm. Even though we like some annuities and the index annuity in particular, there's some really good ones that are out there, but there's also some really bad ones, yeah. you know, that we would never recommend. And so what happens sometimes is individuals that are trying to make a name for themselves mm -hmm. or trying to get into a competitive situation, they might go out and find the worst index annuity that they could find, mm -hmm. and then they'll write an article or form an opinion mm -hmm. that every index annuity is just as bad as that one. Mm -hmm. And it's certainly we know that's not the case. You mm -hmm. know, whether it's an annuity, a mutual fund, a stock, a bond, I mean, there's good ones and there's bad ones. Mm -hmm. I guess just with any investment, there's good times to use them, there's bad times to use them. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, the second question I have, I wanna ask this one to you, Dustin is that, uh, you know, we have our weekly TV show mm -hmm. and we talk on here quite a bit, but, you know, for those of us who don't know us very well around town or who are watching the show maybe for the first time, you know, what do we specialize in? What is it that we do or what do we primarily uh, help individuals with? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, well, we primarily work with, with retirees mm -hmm. and or those that are within about 10 years of retirement. Mm -hmm. And, and the, there's, there's a few reasons for that we're not a real exciting firm to watch as, <laughs> as we manage money. We, we want more boring investment. Yeah. We want safe things. Well, that, well, slow and steady. Slow right? and steady. Right? Slow yeah. and steady, yeah. right? So, so safety is our number one priority as a firm. We, we don't think that, that clients that are in retirement or, or getting ready to retire should ever have any significant losses that, mm -hmm. that they're waiting to make up for before they can retire. Mm -hmm. We still want to get reasonable rates of return. I mean, we want to gain somewhere, you, you know, in the six to 10% range. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we do better, sometimes we do less, but we want to earn somewhere between six and 10. And then number three, we want to keep everything simple. Mm -hmm. Clients, I mean, retirement planning can be very complex, yeah. but it doesn't have to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, it can be simple. It can be easily understood. <coughs> and, and that's what we try to do for our clients. Yeah, and, and I, think it, I think it's really important that as, as Dustin was just mentioning, as you move closer and into retirement, that you work with somebody that specializes in this area. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is there are a lot of individuals that can help you accumulate a retirement nest egg. Mm -hmm. And they may be able to help a little bit with transitioning mm -hmm. into an income, but that's a completely different set of skills that yeah. you need. Mm -hmm. it, it's kind of like, uh, to use an analogy, it's kind of, you know, you, you have a general practitioner that you mm -hmm. go to as your doctor. He or she may be very good and know a lot of things about different areas, but when it comes time to get your knee operated on, mm -hmm. your general practitioner could probably do it. I mean, they, they're a doctor, they could probably study from a book and they could probably figure it out but that's not who I'm going to to get my knee right. operated on, right? Yeah. I, I wanna to go to the person that does 10 of them a day, you right. know, for the last 20 or 30 yeah. years. And that's kind of what we are. You know, we can be general practitioners, but there's, there's a lot of them out there. Mm -hmm. What we've decided to do is to specialize. We wanna right. be a specialist in operating on the knee or in this, mm -hmm. in this regard, what we're talking about here obviously is retirement planning mm -hmm. because it takes a, sec, a, a different set of skills a different uh, set of investments mm -hmm. uh, as you move and transition to that next uh, phase in your life. Mm -hmm. So a lot of advisors are good at getting you to retirement and we specialize in helping those get through retirement. Right, it's a completely different skill set. Mm -hmm. Well, if you all have any more questions with us, you know, please feel free to give us a call or, or check us out on the website. So when you read about or hear about a, a low cost mutual fund, that may be the case. It, it may be low in fees for the management fee. But then inside mutual funds, they have three or four different fees that you could be paying on an annual basis.
to talk a little bit about why the top advisors in the country are starting to stay away from mutual funds inside their portfolios. The first reason that, that you would want to stay away from are the fees that are going on. And now with mutual funds, you can kind of think of it almost as if it were an iceberg. With an iceberg, you see the part that's sticking out of the water, but the bulk of that iceberg is underneath the water. Well, mutual funds are, are no different. So when you read about or hear about a, a low cost mutual fund, that may be the case. It, it may be low in fees for the management fee. But then inside mutual funds, they have three or four different fees that you could be paying on an annual basis. Now, the way it works is, is they don't send you a bill that says, okay, you owe us one or three or four percent, however much you're paying. They just deduct it out of the performance. So let's just take an example and say we have a $100,000 account. Now, on that management fee that, that they stated, we, it, it usually ranges somewhere between 1% and 2% per year. The average management fee on a mutual fund is 1.5%. So on that $100,000 example, you're paying $1,500 per year in a management fee. Well, like I said, this is one of about three or four potential fees that are going on. The biggest fee that you're paying on a mutual fund is what's called trading cost. And now while, I'll, while ago I was telling you about the iceberg, this is what's underneath the water. So these are what's called unstated cost or pass-through cost. And the way that works is, is as the fund manager is buying and selling within that mutual fund, well, guess what? Those charges are racking up, getting higher and higher. So the, the average trading cost on a mutual fund is, is again, about 1% to 1.5%. So if we just take the management fee plus the average trading cost, well, now you're paying 25 to as much as 3% on, on what you thought was a low-cost mutual fund. So let's look at that example again and say $100,000, but now you're paying 3% per year in trading cost and management fees and, and other costs that are going on within that mutual fund. Well, that's $3,000 per year that you're paying whether it makes money or loses money. Now, like I said, they don't, they don't send you a bill, they just deduct it. So let's say the market goes up by 10%. Well, if you're paying 3% in fees, well, then you, you only got 7%. Well, now let's do it on the flip side, though, and let's say that now you, you should make 10% because of the, the positions that you had, but you're paying 3% in fees. Well, well, guess what? They still get paid. Whether they make money or lose money, they're getting paid. So in that scenario where the market goes down by 10%, well, you lost 13%. So what happens is that starts compounding over time, and what you should have if you weren't paying fees and what you do have are much, much further apart than, than they should be. Now, the other problem with mutual funds is that you can't control when you say, sell and buy them throughout the day. So let's say that we do have a, a red flags going off and we need to make sure and exit the mutual funds as quickly as possible. Well, you're stuck. You're, you're there until four o'clock that day. So whatever the cost is, whether it's good or bad, at four o'clock that day is what you're gonna get if you decide to exit that mutual fund. So a lot of advisors, especially the top ones, are steering clear of mutual funds. Now, Back to the fees, what I was talking about a while ago is, is just what's going on within the mutual fund. If you're working with an advisor, then his fees are gonna be on top of this. So if you're paying that 3% fee for the mutual fund and you're paying an advisor a fee, that's what we call a double dip account. So if you have any questions about what types of fees that are going on within your account, make sure and give someone a call. We can do one of these reports for you at no charge. It's called a strategic wealth report. Please feel free to call our office and or visit our website. We need to look at proactive planning when it comes to your retirement plan and not reactive planning. So we need to develop goals and, and objectives and then develop a plan of action in order to get throughout retirement without making really emotional decisions. talk a little bit about how to develop and, and maintain a proper income plan. So what I want to do is, is we need to look at proactive planning when it comes to your retirement plan and not reactive planning. So we need to develop goals and, and objectives and then develop a plan 
of action in order to get throughout retirement without making really emotional decisions. And what I mean by that is, is let's look at, at, a, at a few uh, different years here from the year January of 95 all the way through January of 2015. Now, if we would have just put $10,000 into the market in January of 1995 and we just let it sit until the year 2015, we would have averaged 9.79% which is $64,752 on that account. Now, if, if we missed, let's just say that we got emotional and, and the market was seeing some major volatility and we missed the 10 best days of trading during that 20 year period in time, instead of 9.79% as an average, we would have only averaged 6 point, let me make sure I get this right, 6.05%. So just by being a little emotional during this time period, you could have lost out on three and three quarters percent in, in gains, which is a significant amount of money over extended or long periods of time. So I want to talk a little bit about how to develop an income plan without having emotions tying too closely into it. So let's say that we have someone that has a $1 million portfolio. And let's say that the, the person that, that has that million dollar portfolio needs an income each year of $50,000. So what that tells us is we would need to generate about 5% in income per year, which equates to $50,000 a year. Now, what happens if we have that million dollar portfolio and we go through some, some market volatility and, and that portfolio drops by 20%? Now, instead of a $1 million portfolio, we have just lost down to $800,000. So we've just lost $200,000 or 20% of the portfolio's value. Now, in order to maintain that same income level of $50,000, now we need to generate a little over 6% in income per year. So just a little over 6%, which would be 48 k per year. So what happens is, is that portfolio is, is probably going to start drawing out too much money. You're going you're to start to uh, either have to change your standard of living or you would probably have to go back to work. If you have someone that, that specializes in retirement planning, I know we talk a lot about the rule of 100. And basically what the rule of 100 says is, is whatever your age is, you would take that from the number 100 and that's the percentage of your portfolio that you would want to be completely safe and producing some guaranteed income that's going to last you the rest of your life. Then, with the balance of the portfolio, that's where you can go out and take a little bit of risk in order to try and get these higher returns on your money. So what I mean by that is let's go back to that same $1 million portfolio. And, and let's say we have an individual that's 65 years old. So now we've got a $1 million portfolio. And we're going to say 65 years old. So what that tells us is we would want 65% of that million dollars, or 650000 We would want that to be safe and protected and given us some guaranteed income. Then with the balance, which would be 350000 we could go over here and we could go out and take some more risk with that money what that's going to do. Now, let's look at some guaranteed income strategies off that. So let's say we have an individual that's 65 years old. With that $650,000, that's going to produce a guaranteed income stream that's going to last the rest of your life of right at $38,000 per year. Now, instead of, so now we've, we've got a shortfall here of $12,000 that we need to generate off of this $350,000. So this has given us our guaranteed income of $38,000 a year. Now what that, what that makes us do is we only have to draw out 3.4% of this $350,000 in order to make up for that same $50,000. Except for this time, instead of having to deal with market volatility and, and adjustments because of of a correction or because of a little market volatility, now we've got a lot more of our money safe and protected and, and we can go out and take a little bit more risk without the potential of having to go back to work or, or maybe change your standard of living. So if you have any questions about how to, how to really design your income plan so that you don't have to worry when we see this market volatility, feel free to give us a call at the office. 
Now, tax deferred investments are a great way to defer taxes until the future. So really, if we look at the effect a tax deferred plan can have on investments, the performance really can be staggering. On this segment of Strategic Wealth University, we're going to be looking at one of the most or one of the biggest hidden secrets that affects investment performance, taxes. So we talk a lot about hidden fees, uh, we talk a lot about risk management, and of course we talk a ton about safety. But something that can really affect portfolio growth and long-term health is tax investment efficiency. So we aren't tax advisors as a firm, but there are some simple ways to create a more tax efficient portfolio. So first, let's take a look at different ways on a high level view of how we can invest with taxes in mind. So really there are three ways that we can grow our money. Uh, the first way of growth is with a taxable account. Now a taxable account is a type of account that's taxed every time a sell is made in the portfolio. Usually it's a capital gain on an investment uh, when a sell of course is made. So over time, especially with mutual funds or stocks, if there's a lot of turnover, meaning that a lot of sales are made, this can add up to a lot in taxes. Uh, the next way you can, of course, grow your money is through the use of a tax-deferred account. So tax-deferred investments uh, or accounts are what the name implies. The taxes are deferred, and they're deferred until a withdrawal is made uh, in the future. Now, some investments that are tax-deferred are 401k plans or other similar employer-sponsored plans like 403Bs, uh, pension plans, and also annuities are tax-deferred. Now, tax-deferred investments are a great way to defer taxes until the future. So really, if we look at the effect a tax-deferred plan can have on investments, the performance really can be staggering. Uh, then finally, of course, the last way we can grow our investments is a tax-free account. Now, a tax-free account would be something like a Roth IRA, uh, some insurance strategies, and then, of course, municipal bonds. So again, we withdraw from the accounts tax-free at a future date. Now, something that's truly amazing uh, that I kind of want to show is the effect of taxes on our investments. Now, let's say that we took a dollar and we doubled it 20 times. Do you have any idea how much that would be worth at the end of the doubling period if it was tax-free? Any guesses or any ideas? Think about it for a second. Right? It would be worth about a million dollars. So again, we double a dollar 20 times, it's worth a million dollars after the doubling period. Uh, now what would be the effect if we took a taxable account? And again, to recover, the taxes are taken out every time a sell is made. Any guesses on that? About $57,000. A huge difference, right? Now let's say we went uh, the tax deferred route. Okay that at the end of that doubling period would be worth about, depending on your tax bracket, about $600,000. So we can really see the differences. It's, it's astonishing. Uh, obviously, we don't always have the option of tax-free investing, but more times than not, and almost always, we do have the option of tax-deferred investing. Uh, people really neglect to be tax conscious when they invest, and we can of course see taxes can have a significant impact on long-term growth. It really is amazing what taxes can do for your portfolio, whether that's in a positive way or a negative way. Um, now, if you'd like more information on how you can grow your money safely while being more tax conscious, please just give our office a call or feel free to check us out on the website. Uh, we would also love to help you. So again, folks, this class is an open forum. So if there really is a topic that you'd like us to cover during this segment, don't hesitate to call. Thank you.